Hi guys, we were going to take this out for a run today. We're going to see how this compares, which is a Hyper Hyper 10 SC short course truck, four wheel drive, around a hobby wing speedo and a censored reedy motor. We're going to see how this compares to something like the UDRs on our what is faster circuit, but just a quick check to make sure everything works before it goes in the boot of the car. And it has ground to a halt, some nasty grinding noises. I'm not sure if it's a diff, drive shaft, motor or what it is, but it doesn't want to move. So that's not going to be happening today. So we'll have a little strip down and see what the problem is. What I'm going to do first is just remove the pinion. Two mil driver, take the pinion off like that. Transmission runs okay, so, and the motor doesn't turn. So obviously there's a problem with the motor. So we're gonna take the motor out and see what the problem is. Just need to unsolder a few wires and just undo a couple of bolts. So we're back in a second. So we have unsoldered the motor. I also had to remove the servo just to uh, make it easier to get it out. And the motor then comes out like that. But I can't even turn the shaft on that, so obviously there's some problem with the motor. So we'll take it to bits and see what the problem is. So here is our Reedy Sonic motor out of the short course truck. We're going to take it to bits and see what the problem is. We've got these three bolts here, which hold the end bell on. Don't lose any of these screws. And they might be a little tight, and we've then got three 1.5 mil bolts so that then comes off there so we can pry the cover off that's your sensor board here so for a sensor motor it then knows the position of the rotor in the motor uh, not quite sure how this motor comes to bits. Oh, that metal bezel comes off there. And that's got a bearing in it, I would think. Yeah, there's a bearing in there. This could do a bit of a clean. And if you look, I don't know if you can see in there, looks to me like the rotor's exploded. So, push that down. Pull that out. Make sure we don't lose that. And yes, you can see bits of the rotor. And if you can see there, that has had it. That is shattered. That's not going anywhere. So we'll see whether we can buy a new one of these or whether we need to buy a complete new motor. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. So we have finally got hold of a replacement rotor. In the end, it had to come from Germany, all the way Germany to the UK. It was a reasonable price, but it took about, I don't know, seven days to get there. So here's our old one, which we can see has exploded. This is the new one, which we shall open. So here is the new rotor. Comes with a couple of washers. A few more than what we had on the other one. Let's see, do they look... All right, let's take our fingers off with a magnet. Yep, they look the same. They're all good, so we will assemble the motor. We'll move that, we don't need that bit. The can, we will put one of these spacers on there. I'm assuming one of them is meant to go on there. I have given this bit of a clean. Watch your fingers. That should go into there. It's a bit of a tight fit if I'm honest, but yeah, I can feel that, but that feels okay. Obviously, it's rubbing against the side when you turn it, but that feels okay. So we now put the spacers on there. You can't really get these spacers wrong because it's one on each end. Some motors, you've got to be a little bit more careful than that. But this motor's straightforward. So we've got the sensor, sensor board, which we have got the bearing there, which needs to obviously go over the part of the shaft there. Now, if you can see, I've got to do a little bit of a wiggle. Bit of a fiddly process, just trying to wiggle that onto 
the bearing. I've just pushed the armature out a little bit. That's in there. This won't obviously all feel right until we get the whole motor back together. So we have the timing. No, this is not the timing, the end bell of it. Line those tabs up there. That goes on like that. Now if I just spin that motor, that magnet is really nice and strong. Small amount of end float, which you do need. Then we've got these small screws going to the end here. Get the right size driver. Got three of these to go on to secure this end bell. I've done them all loosely tight and then I'll go around and just crank them up. Don't need to be over tight, they're only one and a half mil head so it's quite easy to round them off. Then we'll put the timing collar over it which goes over like that and as you can see you've got the timing mark there now that indicates plus or minus on the timing. The more timing you run on a motor the more RPM you get the less torque but the more heat it will generate so I'm just going to leave this on zero with this running what it was doing it doesn't need to be any more than that. I have got some dynos which I could put it on if I wanted but we're not racing this motor this is just a bit of fun this one so we ain't going to worry too much about doing that. Get that into there. And the driver's just to spit off the bench. But there we go, that's the motor back together. Spins, it feels okay. Small amount of end flow, which is fine. So we'll get that back in the car, get that soldered up and check it's all working. Yeah. Nah, that's alright. I've got a second set of batteries, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. 